Hey everyone, welcome to a brand new Golden Sea stream. And in the previous stream, we uh, we left on quite the cliffhanger, don't you think? Uh, got some bad news. That's not going to be resolved for for another another while longer. So, because we're going to be taking a break from our Dining Dasher crew, and we're going to be revisiting a team from my previous campaign. It wasn't streamed or anything, but it's still canon. It's in the lore. And that is Team Infinity from my uh, first ever campaign that I ever GM'd. That being Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, The Order of Eternity. So, uh, unfortunately one of our players is running late, but we have everyone else here for the time being. So, uh, starting with our first guest, Libby, why don't you introduce yourself? Sorry, um, hi, yeah, uh, I'm Libby, I play Nightshade the Mimikyu. Alright, and, uh, let me, uh, hold on, let me check. I'm getting feedback that my mic is low, I, hmm. That's cringe. There <clears throat> we go. Uh, let's see, hopefully this sounds a little better. And hmm, this sucks. Oh well. Uh, hopefully y'all don't mind if I sound a little quiet. But <laughs> I'll try to I'll try to speak loudly. Uh, for you guys' sake. Uh, but yeah. So uh, here's our our first guest, uh, Libby the uh, I almost said Libby the Nightshade. No, Nightshade the Mimikyu, who joined us all <laughs> the way back in our our third session ever. Um, as, uh, one of the, uh, sort of, one of the judges in the Mimikyu Costume Festival. And then next, let's see, who is our next guest? Uh, Roosevelt, but he's not here. And then after that was, uh, Alta, why don't you introduce yourself? Hey there. Uh, I'm John. I play Alta, uh, the Apple Sun. Uh, I was on, you know, the already, uh, the Golden Sea streams before, Helping a goblin named Lily on a giant whale lord shaped barge. And before all this started, I was the leader of Team Infinity as well as their resident little gremlin. So, you know, Pretty hopefully much. that has changed. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yep. Um, and uh, yeah, and then after that, who is next? Uh, actually, Actually, hold on. I think here we have the current order. Uh, Rob, introduce yourself. Slim. Hello, I'm Rob. I played Slim Shady, the low-key toxicity. I was Team Infinity's heavy hitter, and most likely to get hurt in every battle. Yeah, that I was also our resident musician. So, there's that. Uh huh. And uh, unfortunately, his character's in a, uh, a dire circumstance at the moment, as uh, the last time we saw him, uh, <laughs> he had just gotten his uh, his butt kicked by a um, by some random excadrill, and uh, we now we currently don't know his whereabouts. So, uh, but hopefully, we'll find out in today's session. And then, uh, other John, feel free to introduce yourself. Uh, I am John, without the H, and, uh, last time I was on the LT streams, uh, there was a bit of a conundrum with a, a cooking competition that thankfully got solved in a quite an alright manner. But yeah, I controlled you. Yeah, uh, and, uh, Jimbo is currently the um right. You're the uh, the the mayor of your the, hometown now, right? Yeah, the, the chief of mm -hmm. Marvel. Right? Yep. And uh, for our current final member, we have uh, Max. Introduce yourself. Max, best of you there. Oh, he's muted. I am Max. Uh, I play Terry the Gengar. Uh. I am a currently a uh, a uh, a student uh, in the medical arts. I go from town to town to uh, help people best I can with healing and support and whatnot. 
and I ran into the uh, the group from uh, Golden Sea while I was tending to the needs of a uh, abandoned village, and I also ran into uh, Claire, uh, who told me news about uh, Slim's uh, capture. All right. Yeah. What was that, um, Libby? You good? Oh, sorry, it's my sweet <laughs> uh, no, you. Oh, actually, do you have an extra one I could smoke? <laughs> huh? Uh, Thank you're. You. Can you? Uh. Yeah, just move on. Uh, hold on one sec. Um. All right. Uh, <laughs> Libby, just a heads up. Just, just mute yourself if you're talking to someone. All right. Hello. You good? Can't. Uh, they muted themselves. I guess. All right. <laughs> yeah, I'm muted. Sorry. Okay. All right. Yeah. Just, just, just be careful with that. All right. Anyways, um. Don't smoke, kids. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Don't worry. Uh, we're all responsible we're all adults, adults here. <laughs> we're all adults here. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. It's not the responsible. We're adults. Yes. Anyways. Um, <laughs> anyways, PSAs aside, so, um, and also because this is, uh, sort of piggybacking off of my previous campaign, I'll do a very quick, I'll try to be quick, even though a lot happened, in, uh, uh the previous campaign of Order of Eternity. So, it all started when our, our, our first four intrepid adventurers, those being, uh, Auta, Slim, Terry and Nightshade, all back when they were all unevolved Pokemon, except Nightshade's always been a Mimikyu the whole time. Uh, they all met each other, and they all had their own reasons for adventuring. Um, Terry wanted to uh, aid his, uh, his, wanted to find a way to cure his sick sister. Uh, Slim just wanted to go on an adventure. Outta had heard a strange uh, call from a stra uh, from what he believed was his mother, who had gone missing when he was very young, and uh, Nightshade was looking for his missing friend. And they all happened to meet each other and decided to stick together, help each other, and they formed Team Infinity. Through several uh, adventures, they ended up meeting uh, Jimbo, or uh, um, occasionally known as Neutron, the Metang. Uh, who eventually uh, joined their group along with a Pikpek, a shiny, uh, no, 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 not Pikpek, Trumbeak, a shiny Trumbeak named Roosevelt. And they both joined, and eventually a lot of things happened. Uh, firstly, um, let's start with Auta as the, I guess, resident leader of Team Infinity. Uh, he was able to find Self appointed. Self appointed, yeah, pretty much. Self-appointed and then actually appointed by the rest of the group later on. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I guess I'm the leader, and I was like, fine, whatever. Uh, they, uh, Auta found out that his mom had been captured long ago and had been turned into a partial cyborg. Uh, her mother's a Haxorus. His mother's a Haxorus, by the way. <laughs> but yeah, shine, a shiny Haxorus who was, uh, uh, who was basically had a bunch of cybernetics implanted into her by a terrorist organization known as Team Flare, and then um, uh, was able to thankfully free her. Uh, Slim uh, went on an adventure, but it got a little more than he bargained for when he ended up finding out that he, ever since he was a... when he found out that the same strange phenomena that uh, had attacked his village when he was very young, causing the deaths of many of his friends and his two par his parents, had been orchestrated by another organization known as Team Rocket. And not only that, found out that he that uh, Team Rocket was doing some shady things involving an ancient Pokemon, uh, the embodiment of death, Yveltal. And that Pokemon just decided to pick Slim and as his puppet. And a similar thing happened with Terry, but with Xerneas. Uh, at first thought, you know, Xerneas was the life bringer, only to find out that Xerneas was about to be very, very uh, uh, conservative in, in the, you know, life bringing aspect, and only those who were deemed worthy by them would, would 
continue to live and others would not, <laughs> to put it mildly. And uh, then Nightshade found out that his friend had been captured by Team Rocket and originally uh, Nightshade had successfully found him only to reveal that his friend actually had staged an, uh, an escape along with all of Team Rocket's experiments, namely a ditto. And unfortunately, Nightshade's friend sacrificed himself, and so the ditto pretended to be his friend only to be revealed and then was subsequently recaptured. And then uh, Neutron confronted his uh, father, his, who had, he had a very uh, stre stenu ah, strenuous relationship with, and after a very intense... Uh, battle and heart to heart, they um, but you know they they got on on good terms, and uh, Neutron was even given his father's Mega Stone and was uh, able to continue adventuring with his team. And then Roosevelt, who at this point was now a two cannon, found out that he actually was an experiment from Team Rocket himself. And uh, specifically, a Mew. He was a uh, he was a clone of Mew, a an identical one except for the fact that he is shiny. And the party encountered several other Mew clones as well, namely two Mewtwo's, one that had been turned into a shadow Pokemon, and the other that had been uh, uh, had a bunch of cybernetic uh, cybernetics implanted in them, and then eventually. They both, um, uh, both Mewtwo's escaped from Team Rocket and Team Flare respectfully as, um, te whoa, <laughs> as, uh, as Team Rocket, um, as both Team Rocket and Team Flare collapsed, both Mewtwo's escaped and with a, uh, combined themselves with, uh, the Ditto that pretended to be Nightshade's friend, and they uh, became a whole Mewtwo. And in an amazing, epic final battle that I wish I had recorded, but, you know, it still was amazing. Y'all should have seen it. No, it's fine. <laughs> the uh, Team Infinity won. They defeated Mewtwo and also had defeated Xerneas and Yveltal when Team Rocket and, T uh, uh, and Team Flare had released them. And in fact, along their adventures, they had obtained an egg that when the egg hatched revealed to be a uh, little Zygarde core. And with the help of Team Infinity, this Zygarde was able to reach its full potential and had even been given a name, Henry. And thanks to uh, Henry and the rest of Team Infinity, they were all able to prevent uh, the world's destruction from Xerneas, Yveltal, and Mewtwo. So, 20 years have passed since then. It's been 20 years since that campaign, and now we join with our party, or at least most, some of them, because uh, one of them has been kind of MIA. And now we turn to Terry. Late at night, you're, you're just casually sleeping, Claire had uh, uh, visited you about, like, a few days back. Um, and was uh, a couple days back and had been staying over. It's been a couple days since your encounter with uh, the Dining Dashers. And it is right after uh, the Golden Festival had completed. This is, like, the day, the night of that, that finally finishing everyone uh, celebrating and all of that, uh, the Diamond Dashers had uh, gained an audience with ho -Oh and then were even given a very important task to go off to, um, to try to uh, rescue Lugia. And that happened throughout the night. And as you are sleeping, you're, you're, you're just resting and sleeping the night away, when you feel a very sudden, like, subconscious pull. And it's it's of a kind that you haven't felt in years. It's, it's almost nostalgic. It gives you memories of back when you were an adventurer, back when you first started your, advent your journey with your team all those years ago. 
and a somewhat familiar voice that you didn't hope to hear again appears in your mind. Come find me. That familiar voice of Xerneas, who you know that through the combined power of you, Slim, and Henry, the three of you were able to take down Xerneas and Uveltal. And the remains had been taken by Henry. So the fact that you're hearing this voice must be that something's wrong. And from hearing that, you wake up in a start. Uh, uh, what, what utter nonsense. Uh. And, ju- and, and from that, you can feel that something somewhere Somewhere in the archipelago, something is going on. You can't quite exactly tell, but you know that there's something uh, something going on, and it feels familiar. It has... You can't quite put your finger on it, but you know it has something to do with your adventure 20 years ago. Man, what... Man, what, what did that spirit did to me? Make me rethink all these stuff from years ago. Oh, Adam's here. <laughs> all right. Um, anyways, n- not to break the tension, but Adam has finally joined us. Yippee. All right. Um, but as this is happening, so, Terry, you, you're thinking that, and you remember what Claire had suggested when you had first reunited back in um ba- uh, uh, like a few uh, a couple days prior that it's likely time to bring the team back one last hurrah all right uh, uh but well i can't be thinking about that right now i i want to re- i can't wait to see my friends again all right, and we'll say that for now. You, um, it's quite late, and um, uh, it might be it might be too late to send out any any calls or any letters. So you decide to tune in for the night, and um, for 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 those who are wondering, this whole scene, yes, it is happening at the exact same time as. Uh, the Dino Dashers are facing off against Shadow Lugia. And uh, uh, we'll say that some time passes. Like, we'll say during... While the while last week's session was transpiring. So right after the... Like, a day or two after uh, the battle against uh, Shadow Lugia and Shadow Fog and all of that. We bring ourselves to uh, one of the beaches in uh dorado and there's a like a little secluded alcove that not many pokemon are here well i mean not many pokemon here in general because the the um tour the the tour season has just died down so uh there are not as many pokemon as there were before but one pokemon in particular is uh present and that is a uh, shiny toucan named Roosevelt. Well, who's that guy? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so, such a such a dashing fellow with a with a distinguished monocle. <laughs> mm, indeed. He owes me like Certainly. ten bucks. <laughs> really? Does he? Uh, I don't remember. I I'm pretty sure it was a it wasn't it Slim and Outa that made that bet. <laughs> Yeah, you owe me twenty bucks. Yeah, <laughs> for context, nah. for for context, right at the very in the very last session of Order of Eternity, um, the party found this mural that was uh, teasing Golden Sea, where they saw a mural featuring Ho O Lugia and Eevee, a uh, Tynamo, and a Marini, 
And Slim's like, eh, we'll never see that. We don't have to worry about that. Alta's like, 20 bucks says you're wrong. And so, well, let's just say when they finally reunite, it's going to be an interesting interaction. Anyways, so Roosevelt. It's been, uh, uh, it's been uh, like a couple days since the uh, Golden Festival. It was a pretty crazy um, holiday and just being able to see so many... Um, like all the, all the parades, all the vendors, and all the all the celebrations, especially because this one in particular involved uh, people, uh, regular Pokemon, witnessing a legendary god of the skies that hadn't been present in centuries. So it's been quite the eventful week. Um, but now you're taking a casual stroll down the beach, you know, trying to get some fresh air when you feel a uh, a faint like almost tug in the back of your mind that uh, at, thi at this point, after many years of, after knowing who you truly are, you've come to realize that um, the, you, you've come to recognize this call, and it is a call from an old friend. Or more like an old family member of sorts. As you, uh, suddenly, as you turn, you find that your location has completely changed. To that of a familiar, faraway island. Hmm. How peculiar. Oh, what the heck? Oh. Wrong, wrong music. There we go. Sorry, there we go. not sure why that was there. I'll have to, um, cl um, eh, whatever, it's fine. So, Roosevelt, it's, uh, it's been a little bit since you were last here, but, um, you've, you've come familiar, uh, you familiarized yourself to, to this place. This is the home of your, in a sense, parent, kind of, genetically speaking, biological parent. And that is Mew. Hello, Roosevelt. What's up? <laughs> how's your uh, How's your adventuring be? I uh, hear that you've uh, ha witnessed a, quite an interesting festival over in those islands. Yeah, you know, beautiful isles. Um, a nice, relaxing uh, sort of, um, you know, scaring marinis into being afraid of their power. It was that was fun. Uh, oh, yes. Also yes. nice festival. Mm-hmm, wonderful. Well, you see, I had, uh, you know, it was just keeping t uh, tabs on all the, uh, anything that needs to be taken care of throughout the world, you know, and also just out of boredom and curiosity. However, um... A couple nights ago, I felt an odd, uh, an odd presence, a strange calling from those islands. I, I'm not sure if you picked this up in your travels, but are you familiar with the story of Ho-Oh and Lugia? Hmm. I've heard about them. I think I've studied them a little, but that was a while ago. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and also, like, out of character, uh, well, not out of character, but, like, not speaking as Mew. Roosevelt, you would know that, uh, you likely would have learned a bit of Ho-Oh just being in the festival as just being a, the embodiment of the sun in the sky that the, the Pokemon of the archipelago worship, but you've never really known much about Lugia other than they have not been seen in centuries up until, um, now with what has apparently transpired uh with the diamond dashers however information about what transpired in the world islands is not publicly available at this point so you don't know what happened all you know is the diamond dashers went there they did something good and now they're heroes okay and so mew continues well you see those um speaking of that marini yes uh that you mentioned those those three adventurers, those those three children, they were, they were there on those islands with Ho and Lugia, and they did fight well. 
very impressively. However, I've come to learn that something still lingers there. Some darkness. And it worries me because it reminds me of, well, everything that happened back all those years ago with you and your friends. Hmm. You know, I, you know, I always knew those kids would uh, grow up to do something great. I assume that's what they did. Yes, yes, they uh, fought very well, even though uh, they were, they, they very could have easily died from that. But, well, we'll let, uh, I uh, won't be asking them to make a uh, return trip over to those islands. Those kids deserve a break. That's why I'd like you to ask you to investigate those islands and see what, uh, see what presence still remains there. Gotcha. Fact, Can do. In fact, if I recall, some of your old uh, friends uh, might be going there as well. Oh, really? Yes, if I do think that there are a few of them on on the island that you were just th uh, at already in the capital, so um, might be a, a a reunion is in store for you. You know, I've often wondered what became of Terry, especially after he licked ectoplasm off to the uh, off of the floor. <laughs> yes, He's puzzled yes. me greatly. Yes, He's well, puzzled me greatly. Yeah, well, uh, oh, trust me, um, your entire team, even you yourself, Roosevelt, are all very quirky characters, I'll say that for sure. <laughs> but, quirky? Me? Never. Uh, he, like, rolls his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can assure you that, reg I can assure you, having a bit of, uh, of a, uh, we'll say, different and unique personalities, is it's good for the soul. And besides... Your actions have, have uh, long ago have deemed you all more than capable as adventurers and heroes. But, you know, in case uh, any of you might feel rusty, I have a little uh, gift for you. A little something that might uh, help you if, thi if things get a uh, little rough. And also, I hear that, this is, that these types of things are very... Um, a uh, common place in, in the culture of the, the Golden Archipelago. And Mew proceeds to, while, while floating this whole time, proceeds to take like a meditative stance, crossing their legs and stretching out their hands with their palms outward. And after taking a deep breath, uh, they close their eyes. And then a, um, what at first looks like a third eye forms on their forehead only for it to take the shape of a glowing rhombus and then it floats forward and then once the uh light dies down <coughs> excuse me sorry <coughs> oh god uh my body didn't like me monologuing too much anyways so once the light finally uh dims down you see that before you is a glowing pale pink crystal Hmm. What is this? Uh, I believe the locals there call it a Z crystal. I, uh, you know, wandering around uh, the planet for millennia, you tend to find some interesting things, and I can't remember where I found this, but it it's always had a quite uh, interesting little bond with me in particular, so I'm sure it should do the same thing for you, although I, uh... Well. Doesn't, uh, if I recall your friend, that, that little, uh, or the, the little mimic you had one similar. So, I'm sure that, uh, they can help you, he can help you, uh, with that if you ever need to know how that works. And the, uh, stone, uh, the crystal slowly floats over to your possession. And congratulations, Roosevelt. You have obtained the Munium Z. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da 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 -da. Uh, so 
this uh, little cool quirky thing, uh, let me just check something real quick. Um, so yeah, this, ta actually, huh, this is a uh, first time in the entire, uh, this entire Golden Sea campaign that we've uh, been introduced to character exclusive Z moves. But, um, so yeah, uh, Adam, we talked about this before. Basically, you can only use this move when it's um, active, uh, when you're, when you have the psychic move set and you're in your Mew form. So just do that while holding, and uh, you can use the Munium C. However, you can only use it once per day. So make it count, and don't use it on a Dark type. <laughs> sure. All right. Uh, and so you pocket the uh, Munium Z, and Mew's like. Well, best of luck, and uh, I believe you uh, should actually, uh, you have somewhere important to be. And with a, uh, a clap, uh, you're uh, immediately just, right as you turn uh, around, you find yourself um, in a, uh, a whole different place altogether. You find yourself in a, uh, oh wait, you're not supposed to be. Actually, you know what? Wait, wait, wait. Um, Claire, Claire is, but not, not, not Terry. Terry's inside. <laughs> but yeah, Roosevelt, you find yourself just all of a sudden appearing right here in what looks like to be like a um, a uh, very um, a very lower class area where. It's, you know, at first the atmosphere feels a bit uncomfortable. And, like, you look around and see, like, some of these some of these uh, folks seem, like, a little shady. But then you, uh, you turn your gaze over to this little patch, uh, this little, like, almost garden of sorts. And you see a bunch of young Pokemon just, like, walking around sort of, like, uh, carefully inspecting the the flowers and the the you can recognize these are berry trees small little berry trees growing off of them and they're like carefully inspecting them watering them basically just like they seem very excited and you can tell that this is the only small area that has any actual vegetation in this entire place so you can tell that the pokemon here are not really in the best of uh living circumstances until you hear a familiar voice. Roosevelt? Oh, my. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I got it. Yeah. You turn around to see a shiny King Gambit with a metal arm. Oh. Hey, kid. How you doing? <laughs> uh, it's been 20 years and you're still calling me that? Might as well. Uh, all right, whatever. Anyways, um, haven't seen you in a long time. I, uh, thought I actually saw you out in the crowd in the festival, so I take it you were here then too for that, right? Yeah, a very quaint little festival. I enjoyed it a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's quite, quite impressive, uh, to see, uh, not, really nothing like that back home. But, um, it's, it's, it's actually good that, that you're here. We're actually, um... Well, I've been trying to contact everyone back, you know, the old team, Team Infinity, because we have some important matters to discuss. We're actually just about to contact you, uh, but, uh, hey, you're here already, so might as well uh, bring you up to speed right now. So um, everyone's waiting inside, so just follow me. And Claire leads you off in here. Cool. All right, and so you uh, you walk in, you follow. Uh, one sec, you follow the uh, you follow Claire. Wow, sorry, I'm stumbling over my words. You follow Claire, and you go inside to find a lot of familiar friends and some unfamiliar ones as well. How you doing? Ah, stripes. I was waiting for you. 
<laughs> Took longer than I expected. Usually this fate stuff works fast with us. Typically it does. I had a bit of a pit stop, however. How so? Hmm. I won't go into much details. Let's just say there's a surprise tool that'll help us later. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, everyone or most of Team Infinity is here. As uh, Terry, you uh past couple days uh, proceeded to um, at everyone ping <laughs> as many people as you could uh, in Team Infinity. So, uh, luckily enough, most of them were already here. Um, uh, Nightshade, as part of, um, you know, just working with the officials in Pastel Town, uh, was present for the Golden Festival. Aotel is currently uh, living on Dorado with, her fa with his family, uh, working for the capital, and already Claire and, and uh, Terry, you're already here. And Roosevelt was just, you know, you know, anthropologist study, studying the di many cultures around the world. So now only uh, one other person remains, which you have already reached out for. <laughs> and uh, and uh, after a bit of waiting, um, as you guys are just catching up and discussing, a uh, another knock comes through the door. Oh, I'll get it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, Terry, you open the door and are greeted by another old friend, Jimbo. Everyone, uh, it's Jimbo. Jimbo. Jeez, and I thought my glasses were weird. <laughs> Heard the rushes through the door, and he's like, and he like gives like a big hearty laugh, and he's like, "Ha, old friends, I missed you so." And like, obviously, like he appears a bit more mature now, like, but like he's still like a bit jolly to see all you guys. He tries to give Terry a little hug, but like the arms don't really work out that way, <laughs> so he just you know kind of you know pats him and continues and goes on towards. Yeah, the, and in fact, yeah, and, um. Know, in fact, Terry, um, <laughs> dep me up. Uh, but Terry, yeah, you notice up. you notice that behind Jimbo is actually another uh, a new face, a rather uh, a surprisingly small uh, ride on. And then Jimbo goes, <clears throat> "Oh, where are my manners? Um, my friends, I would like to all introduce you to my son, uh, Rabi. Rabi, why don't you introduce yourself to all these nice people?" Hi, um. Uh, you guys must be Team Infinity, right? My my dad yeah. told me a lot about your guys' adventures, and I I'm I'm kind of a fan. And like he, he uh, you can tell that he's uh happy to like finally meet uh like his dad's friends, but also he's he's a little shy. He's a little shy. Good to hear, kid. And so. uh. Meanwhile, uh, meanwhile, the other, all the other kids are playing on the Wii. <laughs> yes, jeez. Uh, you know, do you want to join did. them? They're playing uh, Mario Party. <laughs> Mario Party is that that uh, newfangled video system I've been hearing about? Yeah, but be careful. Uh, uh, Hyrie and Kia are a bit competitive. Right. Why don't you show those? Why don't you show them what you can do? I don't know anything about these video games, but I got trust in you, my boy. And uh, all of a sudden, you hear uh, um, Hi Ray say, 1v1 me, no items! Uh, and and KL go, Hi Ray, this is not Smash Bros. It's not that kind of game. I don't care, 1v1 me. It's th There's no 1v1 mode in this game. Uh, and then Slender and Cindy are just like, Can we just pick a course already? We've been standing in the, in the menu for five minutes. And and both Irene and Claire look at their kids and just like, <sighs> mother's life. Well, sounds like they're... there's there's no rest. Tell me about it. Yeah, I feel a little bit bad. They probably got that from me. <laughs> sounds like they moved to Mario Kart. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so while uh, hold on one sec, we'll we'll, we'll say that um, all all while all the kids are socializing, um. All the adults can 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 talk. We'll have a have a little staff yeah. staff meeting. <laughs> yeah. 
I yeah. seen none of us spared any time while we were all split up. How many of our grads running around? Of course. Well, you know, things, life changes, and, you know, well, new parts, and, well, the greatest parts of our lives enter from that. Yeah, Otto turns to look at Irene. Yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> Otto with that subtle riz. Yes, what? well. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> <laughs> uh no the no that would have been beforehand y'all are already have already been together yeah we're already there exactly still that doesn't mean you can't riz up your wife even if you've been together for a long time <laughs> honestly i think if you've been married for a long time that's where the riz is like at its peak exactly yeah <laughs> okay so um claire's like yes well you know me, personally, I couldn't ask for anything more. Although, well, outside of the reason why we're all here, um, I'm sure most of you have already, to the ones that we reached out to directly, have already already know why we're to uh, have met up in the first place, and that is that Slim has gone missing. 